थ्री हंड्रेड एंड फिफ्टी वर्स फर्स्ट वर्स ऑफ शंकराचार्य विवेक चुड़ामणि नित्य अद्वय अखंड चिदेक रूप बुद्धि आदि साक्षी सदस विलक्षण अहम पद प्रत्यय लक्षिताथ प्रत्यक सदानंद घन पर परात्मा नित्य अद्वय अखंड चित एक रूप दिस इज द नेचर ऑफ अवर सेल्फ दट इट इज कॉन्स्टेंट इट इज पर्मनेंट नित्य इट डज नॉट गेट डिस्ट्रॉयड अवर ट्रू पर्सनैलिटी डज नॉट गेट डिस्ट्रॉयड इट्स अवर बॉडी एंड कीप इट देर इट्स अवर बॉडी एंड माइंड ऑल दीज थिंग्स दैट गेट डिस्ट्रॉयड अवर ट्रू पर्सनैलिटी डज नॉट गेट डिस्ट्रॉयड सो नित्य इट इज ऑलवेज प्रसेंट इवन आफ्टर वी डाई इट रिमेन्स नित्य अद्वय and there are no two here there is only one reality so this supreme self though we confuse that there are so many people i am also one among them it is not like that so advaya there are no two there is no other there is only the self akhanda and because there is no other there is no division also and chit we spend our whole life and also in one life we are unable to get enough knowledge but we spend our whole lives in our own ways to get knowledge but this is full of knowledge this is the uh, embodiment of knowledge chit ek roop hai and it is the only thing that exists and how do we know all these things if something is there in this room say there is this bulb or the clock how do you know these things because you have seen so to understand that something exists somebody has to see it if somebody doesn't see it how can you know that it exists so buddhi adi sakshi who has seen this who is the witness the witness is buddhi buddhi is intellect and adi and egoism intellect egoism mind etc sees this this atman how do we see this even when you go as go to sleep always you have this idea that i am existing i am existing etc so that is what is seen here so that is what is the idea we get even when you go to deep sleep when there is no dream still you think that i exist i exist etc so after you when uh, there is deep sleep there is no thought but after you get up from deep sleep you say i had a good sleep so that i consciousness this idea of i has not gone and who is witnessing this this intellect is witnessing how is it that so if there is a mirror which is very clean that mirror will show your reflection similarly if your intellect is more and more clean it has got less and less of desires if your mind is less and less distracted it will show you the correct reflection of your true self that is the atman so buddhi adi sakshi they are the witness of what sadasat vilakshana hai so buddhi is also the witness and the witness the atman is also witnessing buddhi actual witness is who it is the atman it is the atman which is seeing all these things but there is no form there is no uh, personality for this atman because there is only one personality there is no name there is no form there is no address etc so this buddhi and mind etc they work both ways if they are pure they reflect the atman and atman it is because of the atman that buddhi and mind etc are there sadasat vilakshana hai and they are distinct from what sat and asat from the gross and the subtle they are different from the uh, the atman is different from the gross and the subtle and aham pada pratyaya lakshitartha hai so when we talk in language we make different kinds of meanings suppose somebody is there and you are telling that person some very simple thing and the person cannot understand 
after a long a lot of time after a long time that person understood then we usually say oh you are so intelligent we say like that that doesn't mean that the person is intelligent that means that you are making a sarcasm you are sarcastically making fun of that person that oh you couldn't understand this simple thing similarly there are so many other things which we say when uh, somebody says uh, say go to hell or jahannam mein jao in hindi english in all languages there are different kinds of expressions when you are annoyed with somebody you say okay you get lost so that is just a figurative expression that doesn't mean that you should get lost that means that i am not interested in talking to you or you please go away so how do we understand these things because whenever we talk we you see when we were children we saw somebody talking and then slowly we started getting when we when we did not even start talking we saw people talking and we started getting the meaning of the words so somebody was telling bring me water so we heard oh this is how this is told and then after we saw a person was telling bring me water and then another person ran and brought water so we said oh okay so that means when this person says bring me water so you should go and bring water that is why every house they have their own some expressions in almost every family there will be some expressions which are unique to that family like some people will call food something particularly when the kids are there so in all languages every house has got some peculiar words so when we are children we catch those words and then we go on go to some place and talk to other people we use those words so because the child doesn't know that these words are not universal so why because the child has heard this mother is telling or father is telling all of us are speaking and then they are understanding okay so when how how do we get the knowledge of language when somebody is there who is a adult and that adult is telling something to another person that bring water then we listen okay this is what that person will do and after that person says bring water this person goes and brings water but sometimes the person says okay bring me some water so that i will drown myself chullu bar pani mein doob marenge ha so all these kinds of expression so this also the child sees and says that bring some water so that i will die you are creating so much problem particularly this is the typical conversation between husband and wife so husband will say oh i will die let me hang myself so the child sees that the father said let me hang myself the mother is not doing so actually if the father says let me hang myself the mother should go and give some rope or something and end the problem but people don't do no this is the logical solution somebody is saying that let me die immediately give him the material but the child sees no that is not happening this material is not being given then the child understands oh that means when such a thing is told then you don't act on that hmm or some people say that oh they, when they are very happy in many indian languages there is this expression ha ah, that i will die ha ah, that i uh, mar jaunga ha ah, mar jaava in punjabi for example this so that means that i will die let me die but nobody dies there it is a expression of joy or happiness so the child sees okay they said mar jaava but nobody died so this is this is how we learn language so that means in language there are different kinds of meanings there are different kinds of meaning the same word when pronounced with different accents or different emphasis gives different meaning for example this idea that you are intelligent so somebody is sitting and you tell a joke and nobody can understand and because the joke is simple but people the level doesn't match so they say oh you are so intelligent you couldn't understand this or somebody says do you know if you put apple from the top it falls so my god you have invented the gravitational law then the person doesn't understand so why because it's a sarcastic mark remark so the same thing then 
if you go to somebody's house they say oh you have come 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 and somebody will say oh you have come okay like that so the same words and the same expressions we have different emphasis so that is why in any language there is something called the direct meaning of a word and then there is something called the implied meaning of a word so there is like the implied meaning is which you understand based on the situation based on what has been told before and after based on who is telling that and based on where it is being told and in what tone it is being told so these things are there in language so that is something called direct meaning shabdartha direct meaning of the words and there is something called lakshyartha that is the implied meaning so when the guru says to the disciple tatvam asi that you are that the disciple tries to understand what the guru said because by the word meaning you are that you what do we understand by you you means our personality we have a name we identify ourselves with a body we have some qualification we stay somewhere all these things put together are you so the disciple if the disciple thinks you means that then the disciple will be mistaken so the disciple analyzes what is tat tvam what is the uh, meaning of the word you then also analyzes you are that that means what so what is the meaning of that so that also the disciple analyzes so here that is what is being told aham pat pada pratyaya lakshitarthah lakshitarthah you see aham brahmasmi the person is supposed to say that aham brahmasmi or i am the brahman i am the ultimate reality i am god once the disciple gets the instruction tatvamasi this is what the disciple is supposed to understand but whenever we say aham i i eat i drink i go to my work i come back to home etc i have kids i have some kind of employment i have money whenever we use this term i that denotes a particular personality it denotes a particular life it denotes a particular person name etc 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 but that is not what is meant by the mahavakya or the great statement aham brahmasmi that statement which we found find in the upanishads does not mean does not refer to your body and your mind does not refer to your this insignificant personality or this little personality limited personality it refers to the infinite atman so how will you understand so that is why you have to know what is the implied meaning of that word aham aham pada pratyaya lakshitartha it you should know the implied meaning which is pratyaya which is inside pratyak which is inside which is there in everyone what is that sadananda ghana paratma it is always in bliss and it is paratma it is the highest self so that is what is being referred to as i here that is what is being referred to as i here so you should know that you should understand that that this is what is i to understand how will you understand even in secular subjects if somebody is coming and teaching in the classroom and the teacher sees that if there are 40 students among 40 some immediately catch it and some take some time and some even after telling them again and again they don't understand there is some difference so there are three types of students if in uh, kerala there is one uh, in trivandrum near trivandrum there is one temple if you go there there will be three statues so in one statue if you put suppose you take a small stick like those sticks which come in the uh, the sticks which are made out of coconut trees which are used for brooms etc so that type of stick if you take and you put it in the ears of a student uh, of one statue there are three statues they are supposed to be the representative of three kinds of students so if you take one stick and put it in the ear of a statue that stick will come out from the other ear 
So that means there are some students who are completely what you call selfless, nishkam karmo, you know, without any, they don't bother, like government of India, it works, selflessly it works. So if they want to create any road or anything, they will make, but even when after once they have created, made that road, they go away, one rain comes and everything goes away. So they are not bothered about the result, because in Gita it has been told that you should only work, not bother about results. So that is what has happened to all of you. Why nobody is smiling? This was supposed to be a joke. In food, there some problem was there. Morning food or some stomach problem is there. What? Even after this, this person is like, what happened? No, you didn't understand the joke. Oh, okay. So you can smile. I think they don't charge. The last time I checked, there was no tax on smiling. <laughs> Or all so serious like Atma, Brahman. I am getting a friend now. <laughs> <laughs> no, your expression is uh, we'll see then we can understand. But I am not able to understand that. <laughs> because you are after the joke, you are like I have a glance of a face on it. Yeah. Internet I am working. Hmm. No, smiling is supposed to be external uh, anyway. So this so the government of India works like that. They follow Bhagavad Gita, Krishna, that they are not bothered about the effect of action. They can construct a bridge, immediately bridge falls. It happened in Kolkata, no? no? The one bridge yeah. suddenly yeah. fall, fell. So it was not a very old bridge. But anyway, that's what happens. So, like that, you do something and then you, uh, this student is a selfless student. This student hears from the teacher and does not keep it in the brain. Just from one year and the other year. Uh, I hope such students are not there. Uh, and then the other, other student is there. So in the other statue, if you put a stick from this ear, it will come out from the mouth. So there are some students. They will not stop talking. Even in devotees, so-called devotees, they will like, Oh, Jano, I'm sitting here, I'm sitting here, I'm Oh, Baba, Maharaj Kota Shundar Bolle, blah, 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 goes on and on and on and on. And so there is no full stop. Simply goes on and on and on. So that comes out from the mouth. And there is another statue. I wonder what happens to those sticks which go into that statue. They should be having something from where they will remove. Anyway, if you put a stick there, it will go inside. It will not come out. Have you been to the temple? It is, uh, it is called the Suchindran temple. Uh, yeah, but you have not seen the statues. Uh -huh. That is what. It is kept outside. It is not a statue which is worshipped or something. It is just three statues. Symbolic. Huh? Symbolic. So th this is like how students are there. So why does that happen? Why is it that some people are able to grasp? And also so many people hear these scriptures. Everywhere in all religions there are some scriptures and almost all the scriptures say the same thing. Nobody says that the body is the ultimate truth. No religion will tell you that. But all people hear that. But still why it doesn't get into people's head? Why it doesn't not get? And Swami Adbhutanandaji who was not very much, who did not have much formal education. He was sitting, uh, he was in Belurmat. He was the direct disciple of Sri Ramakrishna, one of the direct disciples of Sri Ramakrishna. So he was sitting in Belurmat and uh, then the class was going on. A Pandit had come and they were teaching Katha Upanishad. And in Katha Upanishad, it is told that how you have to be very careful in discriminating what is real and what is unreal. There is a grass which is called Munja grass. So in that grass, there are two parts. So if you have to remove the two parts, you have to be carefully remove it otherwise it will not it will get torn away so he says that pandit says he was explaining that you have to remove it so carefully and at that time swami shuddhananda ji who was the disciple of swami vivekananda swami ji was there after the pandit went away the whole day adbhutanand ji said ha pandit thik bole se the pandit told it was correct explanation how could this person who did not know much Sanskrit, did not have formal much formal education, understand that? 
because of the training of the mind you see there is one thing which is called education then there is another thing which is called training so we all get education but very few of us have a trained mind we don't have a trained mind we have an untrained mind and that's why we are not able to focus on anything and you may think what focus means usually what we think focus means food do we think focus means food focus means we think studies career etc right but i am talking about focus in food focus in sleep focus while you watch a movie you watch a play you watch a game of cricket or football or whatever we don't have focus focus in relationships generally we think oh these are leisure things we don't need to focus no people who are a uh, discipline of a trained mind will be able to focus on these things so if you see a, a movie if you watch a movie and after that somebody asks you oh in that particular scene what was there you will not be able to tell you would have seen only the face of the hero or the heroine as the case may be but you will not be able to say what are the other things who were standing behind or what was the uh, poster somewhere distant because your focus is not there people eat food without understanding even the taste because the focus is not there why focus is not there because your mind is not trained to do things why mind is not trained to do things because you have lots and lots of distractions why do you get distractions because there are desires but not only because of desires because you are anxious to attain those desires you see if you have a desire and you say okay i want to achieve this let me focus on that then it would not be so much trouble but we are anxious we are always thinking okay now i have to do this then afterwards i have to do that if i don't do it immediately or within time i will not be able to do that so you are constantly torn you are actually pulled at from various directions and you don't know what to do you don't know what to do so that is the situation that is that is what happens to us most of the time and so you see this pratyek sadhananda gana hai paratma this thing this infinite source of infinite bliss the source is also infinite and the bliss is also infinite so infinite bliss is there inside you sadananda gana hai sadananda always eternal bliss but people are not able to understand that we search for bliss or enjoyment or joy outside of ourselves why does that happen why do we do that because we don't have a focused mind so people who have less and less of distraction people who have more and more of focus can understand the inner meaning of any statement they are more sensitive which we see all the time you tell a thing to a village woman and she understands immediately you tell the same thing to a person who has studied maybe has some phd's in some city and that person cannot understand the inner meaning why because that person has got an untrained mind so what we should do we should discipline or train or regulate our minds and then we will be able to understand the inner meaning of the word i aham when i say i go what does it mean i will be able to understand pratyek sadananda ghana hai and i will also be able to experience that inner joy ittam vipaschit sat asat vibhajya nischitya tatvam nijabodha drishtya nyatva swamatmanam akhanda bodham tebhyo vimukta hai swayameva shamyati ittam in this manner vipaschit the person who sees what does that person see the person sees the truth how does that person sees the truth the person sees the truth by sad asad vibhajya by discriminating or discerning between the real and the unreal what would take me towards my true personality and what will take me away from my true personality what will make me more Uh, go towards the this infinite source of bliss 
or what will take me away from this infinite source of bliss or God. So that person, Tattvam Nishchitya, knowing the truth of one's own life, knowing the truth, how, how does that person know? Nija Bodha Drishtya. That person doesn't know this by somebody's instruction. The Guru's instruction may help that person to do that. But a person has to oneself understand the truth. Nija Bodha Drishtya by one's own illumination, one's own insight. Nyatva having known Swam Atmanam, oneself as Akhanda Bodham, which is absolute knowledge. Knowing oneself as absolute knowledge, Tebhyo Vimuktaha Swayameva Shamyati. And that person gets rid of all kinds of obstructions or gets rid of all kinds of bondage. Vimuktaha becomes free and attains Swayameva Shamyati, directly attains peace. So a person who sees the truth by constantly doing discrimination attains to the highest peace or bliss. Agyana Hridaya Granthe Nishesha Vilaya Tada Samadhina Avikalpena Yad Advaita Yada Advaita Atma Darshanat. So Agyana Hridaya Granthai, the person whose heart has got a Agyana Granthi, a knot, a Granthi means a knot of ignorance, Agyana. And that has, that what happens when a person attains to the truth of one's own self, it becomes Nishesha Vilayaha, Tada Nishesha Vilayaha, it becomes completely destroyed. It is completely destroyed, totally destroyed. How? When a person Samadhina, Avikalpena Samadhina, by Nirvikalpa Samadhi, when a person attains the truth by Nirvikalpa Samadhi, what is Nirvikalpa Samadhi? There is no concept, no notion, nothing. The mind is completely dissolved. When that happens, Yada Advaita Atma Darshanam. And then you get the knowledge of Advaita. You get the knowledge of that one reality or truth which has got no second. For that, which with, with, there is no second. That's why Advaita. Advaita means two. Advaita means there is, there is no second. No, no second reality. So this Advaita. Nirvikalpa Samadhi means your mind will go away and you will be merged in that one infinite source of bliss, truth. And so when that happens, all your ignorance or all your wrong understanding about yourself will go away. And then you will attain to the highest bliss. Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Tat Sat 